Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number five of my journeyman career in Football Manager 2015 here with Braga. It's a very important game. Uh, we need to win to get that first position back. Obviously, Benfica have already played their game, uh, but interestingly, we are playing them next. So this is really a big episode. Uh, we're playing at home against Balanenses, and again, that's probably not how you say their name. Uh, you probably say it in a Portuguese way, uh, but that's why I want help from you guys as well. When I'm playing these different leagues, I might move to another league. I'm not sure of names or whatever. Um, what I notice the majority of the time, uh, people just say, you have no idea how to pronounce names or just laugh at that fact. But one out of 10 times probably is where actually someone helps me with people's names. I know that people actually really want to. They request me, send me messages if you need it, and to know any names from a certain country or something. Yeah, tell me. So, yeah, I like those kind of things. So, instead of saying me, telling me that I have no idea how to pronounce these names and just laughing at that fact, they instead help me. That's That, that would be what I appreciate anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, no doubt I, I would get most names wrong in the, these Portuguese league. But, uh, yeah, um, if you could... Leave your help. Uh, that will be uh, greatly appreciated because I want to get names right as well. Because uh, it's pretty stupid when, because I would feel the same if I was watching videos, and it will be annoying if yeah someone's not pronouncing the name at least close to being correct. Obviously, it can't be exactly if they're. It'll sound. It will still. It will sound more natural if I was Portuguese. If that makes sense. The. I guess the how it sounds, and obviously I can't make it exactly because I'm not Portuguese, like uh, the way I speak. But still. As close as I can, that will be good. So, we will go in. We're still having our problems with injuries. We've got three injuries. One to our main goalkeeper, Matthias. Um, Sammy, who's just on loan winger from Porto. He's not amazing. Like, if Porto are willing to send him out on loan, uh, you, you can see the difference there in the team. So, And also, Rafa, who started really well for me, as you know, scoring two goals in three games with an assist and a player of the match along the way. So, hopefully, he doesn't decrease too much because he's going to be a key player for me going forward. And, yeah, maybe even going even f more forward when I move to other teams, I may sign him. Out of all these players, there's probably, yeah, there's only, there's a key few. Definitely, Rafa's one of them. Not sure who else uh, I would take maybe uh, I'm not really sure uh, I like that this Enrique guy as a left back though who's just on loan um, Tiago Rodriguez maybe I like him as a creative midfielder like a deep line playmaker or an even advanced player he's just really creative I just like him because signed him for free and he's yeah pretty good he seems for that kind of level uh, but maybe Felipe Pardo, he's getting his first start for me, actually, after coming off the bench three yeah three times for two goals and assist. So he's definitely, he could be one. He's 24. He's a stronger type of winger, um, explosive kind of player. And Salvador Agra as well, because he's performed real well for me with four assists. Uh, he's been a real dominant winger. He's just one of those really good uh, wingers that create chances for their team. So I'm going to, yeah... Um, Predominantly keep the same starting 11. Just, yeah, like I said, Enrique coming back. Well, he did start, but he got injured in the previous game. So we'll go in and, yeah, of course, like I said, starting Felipe Pardo because uh, he's done really well off the bench. So let's see how he does uh, starting a game here today. And he may, yeah, play well and uh, go for it, yeah, vie for a start against the that Benfica game is going to be huge because they're starting really well. Maybe opposed to Porto. They've really lost the game. Same with Sporting. Uh, so it's good that we have avoided defeat uh, so far. But I continue. I want to continue seeing the good performances. That's what I see more than anything. So I know this tactic. It's it's going well. It's progressing well. Uh, a bad game we play, uh, may, it'll, I'll be disappointed. Not just with a loss or whatever. If we haven't played well, um, that will be disappointing to me. So here, again have no idea of the players, so more than anything, I could apply advice to team and doing it that, that way, what the assistant believes, because I have no idea about these players, that's probably the best move in my view, and also, if people wondering this compared to Manchester United, I'm uploading Manchester United a lot more, it's because I haven't uh, dedicated a day to up to record this all day yet. I've been recording Manchester United in that way so far. It just yeah the way it's gone. But I expect early next week I'll yeah try and get this done because I want to try and yeah finish the first season with Manchester United. I'm not going to stop it. Just make sure you know that it's just when I finish that first season, then I can focus on this a bit more. So hopefully uh, you understand that. Like at least in terms of recording it. Okay, what are we going to do here? Hmm. Just go out there, relax, and play your natural game. The result will come. That's all I want. I want them to play their natural game, how we've been playing in training. And I've been... I changed the general training up to ball control and teamwork in the other one. 
because uh, I want them, uh, I reckon those two are good working together. If you imagine the team, that's another thing I reckon Football Manager uh, could add maybe a 3D training aspect, or you can just put on 2D as well, but you can actually see the visualization, if that's a word, visualization. Um, yeah, like a, or just a visual rep a representation of the training, so you can actually see it in action. Leave your thoughts if you think that would be a good idea, and you can see your players working on the training. So, yeah, leave your thoughts if they should add that into the game. I would love that, so you can get more idea how training is going, and how, yeah, they perform actually. And look at that. We are sorry, yeah, we are showing it on the pitch at the very least. Um, but that was a great cross, and yeah, I don't really. That's what not what this tactic is about. Not about crosses, but it's still it's still a part of our game when there's the opportunity. There's like playing it back to Biano, the fullback, and crossing it far post, and you can see it impact there from the other winger, like uh, the wingers to cross, and it's another goal. And this time it's a dare. Oh, it's offside. But yeah, as I mentioned on the on before, I reckon I'm gonna I'm gonna make some suggestion videos early. People always do it when it's the end to get views and whatever. Like when it's late in this game, when it's close, yeah, it's close to Football Manager 2016, which obviously is far, far away. <laughs> this is still beta stage, but yeah, that's what I mean. Like people always do that to get views, but I want to do it before as we get it. We're gonna dominate in this game, so I'll probably talk about it. Um, I want to do it, not early, like not right now, maybe in a few months or something. I want to give ideas for Football Manager 2016 before it's too late, if you know what I mean. Not doing it like two months before it's released. Do it when the developers actually have time to maybe add your ideas. And because, yeah, there's a high chance of my videos being seen by them, I think that's a good idea. So... Leave your thoughts on that anyway, if you'd like to see that, <laughs> like, not only, like, two months before the new game, but actually, uh, like, when, yeah, obviously, Football Manager 2015 is still popular, and they're still working on the new game, adding new features, or the next game, more specifically, so, yeah, leave your thoughts if you want to see my ideas for the game, I've actually, yeah, this is something I want to talk about as well, I've always had my ideas for Football Manager back when, you know, I always talked about this in kind of my, just, I talk whatever about my channel and stuff, and about Football Manager, like, when I was younger and stuff, I used to go on forums all the time. I've been playing like since I was 14, 15, these kind of management games since Championship Manager. So I've, I used to have ideas like then, but obviously your ideas, there's very low chance they're going to be added. And I've still those written down on the same paper. I keep it in this drawer thing here, if you can hear it. Hear that close. I have It's actually in there uh, with a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, that's what I mean. I still have those and yeah, more ideas since then. But yeah, ideas I thought of when I was younger, like 15, 16 and along ever since then. So I definitely want to make videos around that. But I know if I made them, like I said, for FM15, if I did them late in FM14, they wouldn't have been added. I want to do them when there's enough time for them to be added. So um, you hopefully understood that. And I just wanted to get that out there because that's something you know, I've always been doing. And hopefully it'll be something I can implement uh, one day, whether it be... Yeah, that was my... I was going to talk about it in another video, but in short, I wanted to have some input into Football Manager, wh whichever way it may be. That will be a fantastic um, situation. My ideas definitely added to the game. That's that was that's something I really want to be done, and probably with YouTube now and having a decent amount of subscribers for Football Manager, um, I might have a chance for that. That's like my major goal, if I'm honest. So I'll just say I'm pleased with Agra because uh, he's played well. But yeah, that's my that's my goal. I want to see some of my ideas in Football Manager, and yeah, I if I ever had a chance to, it would be yeah now more than ever. So I really want to work towards that. That's a reason I really want to focus on Football Manager as well. I want because that's um, if I think about what I want to do in my life, um, it's definitely something to do with Football Manager. It's a great game. I'm sure many of you watching this uh, would feel the same way. I just want to. Um, yeah, do something in that way, and I can't. I am right now, but sort of on a bigger scale as well, um, to have some impact in the game. Now I'm just like making videos and stuff. It's which is fun, especially when you're dominating like this. Uh, but yeah, to me, that's my biggest goal uh, to really have some input into Football Manager. Like I said, one way or another. So Felipe Pardo uh, puts us three nil ahead. That is absolutely fantastic, but this is an expected win. This is the only downside managing... Well, I don't regard... They're not like... We're not like a FC Porto or something, or a Sporting. We still need to play well. We need a good tactic, play the right way to get results, and it's not going to happen with ease, obviously. So here, Felipe Pardo had a good game. I'll rest him for the next game. We'll bring on Max Gradle for some pace up front. 
Adair will get subbed. Uh, we'll bring on the young Muhammad Assam, who we did sign on a free transfer. Doesn't have the highest potential in the world, but yeah, he's a good impact player off the bench. He's got a bit of flair, and he can dribble. It'll be interesting to see yeah, what kind of play he develops to, because he's, he's still got three-star potential ability, then that black star into the fourth one. I'm still yeah wondering what the black star means, but I would guess it's almost that level, but yeah, not quite. It's what he could potentially be. It could potentially be his potential. <laughs> That's a bit funny, but what are we going to go on now? Uh, Ruben Mikael, again, he's played really, really well. He's our key player, really, one of our better players in the team. Uh, doesn't have amazing attributes, just really well-rounded in my view. If you look at Ruben Mikael here, uh, he's got no technical attributes above, well, yeah, none that are 16 or more. He's yeah, he's only got 16 for vision, which is really good. Uh, he's just a really solid player. And, yeah, Portuguese international as well. Really like how he goes about it and, yeah, how he's gone about it for me as well. So Max Grade will come on. I think there's a lot more to come from him, and he looks happy because he agrees with that notion as well. He knows he can bring a lot to the team. Mohamed Assam, uh, pressure off him. He seems relaxed. Uh, Tiago Rodriguez. I'll show you, show me what you got today. I just want to see a good display. So um, I have a good feeling uh, so far, like everything is going well with this career. Like my players are responding to me well with good reactions. Um, it's always good to have some good, good communication with your players, of course, and I feel we have a good relationship that way. Like with, Well, yeah, I feel I have a good relationship with the majority of my players. That is always good, um, cause then, and that makes a happy dressing room as well, and that almost, that's like half of how you play well, if I'm honest. The dressing room, the morale has to be good, and then, obviously, a good way of playing as well comes with that. And you've seen that uh, so far, 3-0. But the biggest test is Benfica next. That is what I'm pumped for. I'm just trying to get this match out of the way, kind of, because it's expected. But, oh, no, that's exactly what I didn't want, Boyano. He's going to be missing. He is going to be missing. But I guess Sasso, we can't make a change anyway. So we just, I'll leave it. There's only yeah, less than 10 minutes remaining. But I guess that Sasso guy will come in uh, for the Benfica game. But... Uh, you can see here, they're probably not even going to score a goal, and it's going to be a 3-0 victory uh, for us. Uh, but they've got Pally in the midfield. Mains, don't you get... Oh, they get one. But yeah, obviously, uh, that's just a consolation goal for them through Davison. It's an interesting one. He's like Davison, like an English name, <laughs> like Davison, but it's spelled like in a Brazilian way. That's interesting. I was like, oh yeah, that it's like Davison, like an English name, but... In, spelt in a Brazilian way. Anyway, it's 3-1. Good result here. Again, like I said, the way we played, fantastic. Salvador Agra had another insane game. This time he actually scored and wasn't the provider for the goals. This time the provider came through the central part instead of the attacking part. Oh, yeah, the wide part uh, through wingers. Uh, this time it came through Ruben Mikael through the middle. So, uh, we can really be a surprise in that way. We're scoring uh, through different avenues, and we go first. But again, it's going to mean yeah, the Benfica game is going to be real huge here. Now, here we are for the huge Benfica game. These situations is going to be the high point, uh, at least my time at Braga. These are going to be the more really crucial episodes you're going to see. The games against Porto, the games against Benfica, the games against Sporting, because uh, they're the other rivals in the team, and it's this is the best opportunity to test my tactic to see where we are at uh, playing against the best teams because basically all the other teams, maybe bar a couple others, should be wins for us. You'd be expecting us to win. So, yeah, uh, we got to get up and hopefully win. But, yeah, you do know we do need to make some changes here. Uh, Bayano needs to come out. I said I'll bring in Sasso, so I'll bring him in. But any other options here? We also have Go Goanio. Go I N O. However you say his name, how does he look? He doesn't look too bad. He's well rounded once again. Um, he's only got some lower attributes. Uh, he's got only got a few of those. But Sasso, see, he's got a bit more of the lower attributes, but he's got more high ones. He's got determination. Uh, he's got stamina as well, and he's got balance. And he's he prefers to play as a centre back though. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he plays. And if I compare to this Marcelo guy. Hmm, interesting. He's got two assists. Like, he would be attacking fullback, I would imagine. Okay, he's got no preferred moves. I feel, because we play, we are playing against Benfica, 
I'd rather play a guy who is natural as a centre back because he'll be should be better defensively, uh, more stronger. Uh, that kind of thing you can see with his strength being 15. And this guy's only 23 as well, so he could uh, definitely grow as a player, I would imagine. You can see a yeah, three-star potential ability. So he should do well, um, you can see. And he's been improving a little bit uh, in his attributes. You can see crossing, so he may get forward and be an impact in that way. 190 centimeters, like I said, against Benfica. It'll be good to have someone more defensive. And I'll keep the same starting lineup, of course, the change that was forced apart from that because, um, yeah, we're playing well uh, the way we are. Of course, sometimes I make little changes. Like I brought Felipe Pardo, or Pardo, sorry, into this the previous game, and he made an impact as well. But yeah, Salvador Agra is kind of our form player right now. We've got a couple form players, don't we? And that's that just signifies how we're playing. Ruben Mikael in midfield as well. Diego Mains is proving to be a pretty good signing, I reckon. Because yeah, if you click on him right now, He's got value. Yeah, his value is gradually going down because he's 800K. Well, because he's 31, he's a bit older. But we did sign him for 275 cut price uh, below his value for Granada. Yeah, he was a uh, t first team player in the Liga BBVA. So, he's got. He, of course, he's going to be quality coming to this division. So, this is a huge game. I'm really pumped for this episode. I'm really excited. This would be... Because this is where we can test. I really want to test myself. But Benfica, look at their players. Look at their strikers, though. They got Jonas, the guy from, was it from Valencia? Yeah, from Valencia. So, again, his quality started yeah pretty well. See those high attributes there. Good passer and quick and can dribble and can finish as well. 15 finishing. So, he's going to be dangerous. Then they've got Lima as well. Ooh, he's a good striker. He's a real good striker. 17 finishing and 16 composure. If he's going to get a chance, he's probably going to finish. And they've got Enzo Perez in midfield. A very good decision maker. Works hard for the team. Teamwork, work rate, vision, all that kind of good stuff. Can cross as well. He's a real good player. They've got a lot of those. Uh, Taliska, uh, he's not too bad. Got to watch out from him. He's a young player as well. He's only 20. He could actually develop into uh, an all right player. He's very good free kick taker. And yeah, you, I'm not going to go through all the players. But yeah, you know about them. And again, I'll just use my assistant to apply the advice. Hopefully, he can do that well, and it, it does it pretty well. Like Jonas, he's a very good passer. You've got to yeah, tight mark him and all of that. So yeah, he looks to be on, uh, knowing what he's talking about with applying the opposition instruction. So what we'll do here, assertively, ooh, let's give something for the fans to cheer today. The goalkeeper is looking stressed, though. Hopefully, he can get... And, yeah, my other goalkeeper is back training, so he should be back. Maybe after this game, we'll see. Uh, might make an impact in next episode. Uh, but, yeah, a couple players looking motivated. A couple key players as well. So, hopefully, uh, we can see some impact here. And we are going control C. Not really... Not really changing too much tactically. Well, not changing anything really tactically. I just want to continue to play our possession game. And let's see what we can do here. Enrique whips it in. Ooh, that was a dangerous cross there. Tried to get it into Ada in that striking position. Pardo making the run as well in the box. Uh, looking dangerous. So if we can dominate against Benfica here, it'll really give me good confidence um, in my players. And yeah, maybe confidence to actually win the league title this season. And with that, we'll qualify for Champions League. Would be sweet. And Pardo, he shoots with a lot of power, though. You can tell that in his strikes. He's a really, really powerful winger. And yeah, we've got a couple of those, don't we? Come on. Take the chance. Adair, yes. Adair takes the chance. Uh, that's the difference. And it's good that we kept him. It's real good because we not sure who we've got to replace him. Especially before signing anyone else and he has that impact in the air look at that and he beats maxi Pereira, who's he's not the best in the air uh, obviously compared to adair who's a bit of a taller physical type stronger type uh, and he scored puts us in the lead and hopefully yeah we can continue on here come on defend this taliska yes lucky Mauro, see, this is what I want to see. I want to see, I still want to see us play possession game even when we go ahead. But don't lose the ball. <laughs> That's what's crucial because we are, like I said earlier, working on ball control in training, keeping the ball. That's something. And teamwork as well to practice the way we are playing. Um, and, yeah, so the team uh, gets fluid with each other. That's, the, well, yeah, more so gels. Fluid is the kind of how the tactic is, yeah. More so players gelling together. That's the biggest thing. Alusu or Alisu... They're, they've had a couple chances, uh, but they've been off target. You can't score if they're off target, can you? So, uh, yeah, we're looking like... It's not been the best performance, but you've got to look at the team we're playing against as well. It's not going to be easy. Lima is on. I knew that. I knew that in my head. 
in my head, I knew that was going to be a goal because you saw his stats before. 17 finishing, 16 composure. With one-on-one chances like that, uh, the goalkeeper didn't even look like saving it. He didn't even try, <laughs> pretty much. That's what happened. He didn't even try. Uh, so it's half time here. What will we go with here? We'll say assertively, I'm not happy. Ooh. But, yeah, it's a majority good reaction. We'll go Mauro. Let's say, I appreciate the effort. You've just been unlucky so far. Ooh, that fixed it. Can I say that with him as well? Yes, I fixed it. So all good reactions from all good. That's all good. All good reactions now. So hopefully we can lift in the second half, though. But I'd take a draw away from home against Benfica. But we'll see how it goes anyway. I'd love to win, because then, yeah, you'll be really happy. But to avoid embarrassment, you know, yeah, you're on the right track, because they do still have slightly more quality than us. But here, Salvador Agra, uh, yeah, he's not having a good game, unfortunately. So we're going to bring on Alan, and we'll put him on his more preferred right side. And he's the captain as well, and he's been here for a while. So maybe he could make an impact. Who, oh, yeah, Mauro not having the best of games. We'll bring on Thiago Rodriguez. Maybe someone more creative. Very good. Probably our best creator in the team with 16 vision. And anyone else played poorly? Uh, not. I'll, I'll save one because you don't know you get injury or something. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Alan will say assertively or we'll say calmly. Uh, show me what you got tonight. Uh, he's looking stressed. Seems to struggle with the pressures of the situation. But he's the captain. Oh, he, he mustn't be a good choice for captain then if he struggles with the pressure or the situation. Okay, pressure's off tonight for Thiago Rodriguez. How can he struggle with the pressure? He's the captain of the club. He's 34. Surely he will be long past that. Oh, my God. We'll see how we can go here. Felipe Pardo finds Adair. Could he score this? Adair! Oh! Again, had the right direction. It just was a little too high. Can we score? Here we do. It's Mainz. It's Diego Mainz. What a signing this guy has been. He's been a strong defender. He's created goals from center back. And now he finishes. It's been a pretty good signing if you ask me. And as you know with these series, those are the kind of signings I am going to make for the most part, at least with my money. A couple of people were saying, oh, you're, I can't remember what word you called me or I don't even know. I can't remember. But, like, because I said I wouldn't sign young players, then I signed guys like Assam. But what I meant there, I wouldn't go out of my way to sign them with my money. I sign, I'll sign. i sign these guys on free. Like, they're basically just free. You just pay their salary. That's about it. And pretty cheap because they're young. And, look, what's that? 875 per week. Come on. That's what I mean. Just not spending the majority of your budget on future players. That's what I meant mostly. So, hopefully, you could understand that. But, uh, yeah. It's worth signing those players for free. Like players, cheap players, or young players more specifically, with potential to grow, and they're free, I thought it's a no-brainer to sign them because they're going to grow, and if anything, you can sell them in the future for money. So, yeah, to me, they're no-brainers. But Felipe Pardo, oh, I don't know who to bring off here. Adelan Santos, who to bring off? Uh, maybe Pedro Tiba. someone in midfield. But, well, yeah, Mikael's played a great game. I don't. I ideally don't want to do that. Um, maybe Gradle with some pace up front for Pardo. That's, yeah, that's all I'd do. Because he's got lightning pace. And yeah, he can hit them on the counter or something. Gradle, I'll say cautiously, there's a lot more to come from you. And we'll see if we can hold on here for a huge win against Benfica. And we're looking like doing so. Hopefully we can just maintain possession, but we have to win it back. We'll see how we do. Yes, Custodio. Ooh, couldn't completely lean it back. But yeah, in the end, uh, we do win it back. Uh, plays it forward to Edair. I don't want I don't want it. Oh, come on. Good save. Whoa. That's an important save by him. He's definitely not an amazing goalkeeper, but he comes up here. Very important save. Come on, hold on these last minutes here. I was going to do a team talk, but it's too late, of course. Uh, I was going to do tight mark. Not tight mark, sorry. Whatever is that. I don't even know what I'm clicking, to be honest. Yeah, the team talk where you say whatever it is. Let me make sure. Touchline talk. Assertive. I would have done tighten up, but it was too late. And now they've got a corner. Ooh, lucky. Go on. Alan. I'll see what happens here, then I'll go attacking. Might as well go for the win late, I reckon. 
Oh, great L. We might get it here. Adair. Come on. We may have a chance. Great L again. Cross. What's this? It's a foul. Pereira gave it away. And he picks up a yellow. Come on. We could take this chance. Mikael. No. Now Lima's on the ball. Alusu. Oh, they're in space. Poor ball, but Enrique. Well, dealt with that pretty good, but again, gave it away from the kick. Oh, no. Fuck. That is lucky. He is offside. What was I going to do here? You go attack, yeah? Might as well late and say um, assertively push forward. Just try and score late. But if it just stays a draw, I'll be happy with that. Oh, but someone's going to get a chance here. Who is it going to be? Can we get away? Oh, no. We've got to focus on defending first. We've got to focus on defending first. Focus on defending. Focus on defending. <laughs> I suppose that me saying that doesn't really affect anything. But it looks like it'll be a draw. Unless we can get one late here. It's Graydell. Oh, offside. Offside. But, yeah. We showed we can compete. Uh, with one of the better teams in the league. I'm happy with that. We'll go assertively. I'm happy with what I saw out there. They were positive. Definitely, yeah. Uh, Benfica, they're one of the challenges for the title. If you go... Can I click on them? No. And it means we stay first. That's a huge thing as well. View club information. Yeah, they're predicted to come first. And they're in the Champions League. We're not even in Europa League. So you can see the difference in our uh, quality there. So I'm happy we're able to take a draw. We're able to take a point away. To Benfica. So that's really good, I reckon. And yeah, it means we maintain our first position. Two points. Uh, but Porto have that extra game to play, of course. So if they do win that, they'll be first. But yeah, we are first for the current point in time. And I have to be happy about that. So if you enjoy this episode, drop a like if you want to see some more of this series as well. And I'll see you guys next time.